Well, hello there. Um, as you can see, I managed to get my hair cut, so at the time of recording, lockdown in the UK is easing, which is brilliant. We seem to be getting on top of things. I've had my jab, my first vaccination jab the other day, and my arm is now, well, it's not too bad today, but it, yesterday it was really hurting. Anyway, enough about that. Let's get to the video. So, uh, today's video is about uh, a quick flash fiction story that I, that I wrote. I actually wrote this about two weeks ago, but due to being really busy at work and um, having a bit of a cold and having my daughter's birthday, I mean, I haven't, I haven't had a chance to record a vlog. Um, so I started well back before um, I, I did uh, Islands of Hope, before I started Islands of Hope. I started another little project and it was uh, 20 sci-fi flash fiction stories. So flash fiction stories really up to a thousand words. Um, and I had 20 different stories. I had ideas for about 12 of them. Um, I wrote two, maybe three, sporadically as I do, and then I stopped, uh, largely because I was focusing on Islands of Hope. So to stop myself having to edit other books that I've written, I've got a couple which are in the editing phase, um, I started editing, got a bit bored, and thought, let's write another flash fiction. Um, I've, I've always had poetry, which every now and then I stop and I write a poem, it's quite quick and it's quite straight to the point and, you know, I can get that out quickly. Um, but it's not so much with flash fiction. So I thought, you know what, I'm just going to stop and I'm going to get another flash fiction out, another sci-fi flash fiction. I'm going to revive my book. Um, the book is called The First Flash of Hope. Okay, it's available on Wattpad. It's another free one. Uh, look at the links down there. <clears throat> and there will be a link to it. Okay. Um, so, yeah. If, if you enjoy this story, there will be others there as well. Um, I'm going to stop waffling and I'm just going to read you the story. So this story, uh, this flash fiction, is called The New World. Okay, uh, I'm not going to explain any more than that because hopefully this story should explain itself, even though it's only a thousand words. So here we go, this is The New World, a sci-fi flash fiction. She surveyed the scene, luscious foliage, tall trees blowing in a, in a light breeze, snow-capped mountains in the distance all bathed in warm sunlight. Had they finally found the Garden of Eden? Had they landed on a planet able to support life? She looked at the microcomputer attached to her suit's forearm. A couple of taps and the habitat analysis commenced. In a few minutes she would know. Whilst waiting, she ambled forward, running her gloved hands over large triangular leaves, remembering Earth some ten years ago. She brought into her mind fields of wheat in the sun, long walks through woods and lazy days on glowing hillsides. The virtual reality in the ship helped, but being amongst real vegetation invigorated her. She hoped she could touch it for real, her suit telling her she had but 30 seconds more to wait. Half a minute felt like a lifetime. She looked at the landscape again, then back to the screen. Five seconds had passed. The same again. Five more seconds. Gone. With eight seconds left, she followed the countdown. The glorious tuneful beeps told her the analysis was complete. No sooner had the sound finished than a pie chart appeared. The key numbers stated the atmosphere comprised 19.8% oxygen and 80% nitrogen. Next to this, in flashing green capital letters, the words, Planet Habitable. The hissing of a helmet as it decompressed drowned out her chuckle. She scrabbled for the dome, yanking it off and breathed in life on an alien planet for the first time. It smelt like Earth, or at least what she expected Earth to have smelt like hundreds of years ago. She pressed a button on her arm and said, Hey, Johnny, have you seen these readings? I know, I know, echoed from the hidden speaker. We've done it. We've found it. Well, I'm off to explore. Not if I get there first. They searched the world, so like Earth and yet somehow different. Green's not quite the same shade. Leaves not quite the same shape. Sunlight not quite the same glow. When What they thought they did not know. Just happy to be scouting an unknown terrain, buoyed by the knowledge they were the first humans to step here. Leaving their footprints in the dirt, they would round trees and plants, trying not to disturb the delicate ecosystem. They awed at every bird and insect they came across. As with plants, similar to those at home and in history books, except colours and number of eyes and legs differed. A mile or so from the ship, a crashing caught their attention. Although somehow familiar, it still brought fear to them. The going slowed as they tentatively stepped forward towards the sound. Pushing through dense foliage, the source became apparent. At once their hearts lightened, seeing sunlight dappled across a deep blue pool. At the far end of the pool, a waterfall 
cannoned into the water, creating rainbows from refracted light. In their excitement, the two intrepid explorers looked to each other and nodded. Ripping their spacesuits from their bodies, they raced to be the first into the water. An icy chill shut up their bodies as they entered, but the relaxation of being surrounded by crystal clear waters offset this. <clears throat> they splashed and, and played, dunking each other and diving deep in the water. Small silver fish and insects glittered in the pond, though all were too fast for them to examine. The two made their way to the waterfall, allowing the crashing waters to run over them and cleanse their aching bodies. When the sun, with the sun still high in the sky, they left the water's relaxing atmosphere and lay drying on the land. Soft mosses gave them a carpet to rest their, body, their weary bodies, and soon both drifted off into deep sleeps. She awoke to coughing. Her body itched, but she put that down to the setting sun, a chill now in the air. Her hair stood on end, goosebumps covering her body. She looked across to a colleague, her friend. The scene stole the breath from her. Her colleague's body shook, shivering as if he had been sitting in the Arctic Circle. The goosebumps over his body had turned red, like a small poker had been taken to each one. He stared straight at her with pleading bloodshot eyes, a trail of blood running from his lips. The chill forgotten, she rose and, mo she rose and moved towards him. Pain shot through her body and her head throbbed, but adrenaline, adrenaline spurred her on. He coughed once more, spraying droplets of blood onto her naked body and the surrounding undergrowth. There was no time to suit up. They needed to get back to the ship, to the medical bay. She helped him up, hearing grunts through clenched teeth. They only took a few steps before she realised she did not know the way. She dumped him on the ground, darting back to her suit. Disconnecting the inbuilt tablet, she used software to work out the quickest way back. Her vision swam as she tried to follow the course, picking up her crewmate on the way. Together they stumbled through paradise, coughing and crushing anything underfoot. No chance to hide their tracks. Johnny became heavier, his load too much to bear. He no longer moved his feet, being dragged instead. A few more steps and she could move him no longer. With a low thud, they crashed to the floor. Her breathing became short, wheezing as she fought for every lung of air, full of air. Her body just wanted to rest, to sleep. She tried to lift him herself, but her arms shook, all power gone. As she stared at a mini computer that, <clears throat> that had tumbled a few metres away, she gave in and her eyes closed. The tablet spurred into life. Through its hidden speaker came, We've got your report. Excellent news. We are on our way. And that's it. Um, I'm hoping um, that I've painted quite a picture and given you quite a lot of information without telling it. I think the thing I like about flash fiction is that you can't tell. And we, in the writing industry, it, if, I, if you can't, it's in the writing industry. I mean, I'm a hobby writer. Um, it's all about show someone, don't tell them. And I, and I really, what I like about flash fiction is you really have to do that. You have to show people. You can't tell them every, everything. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoy that. Hopefully you found it exciting and interesting. And if you want to read any more of um, the flash fiction that I've written, remember the link's down there. <clears throat> if you want to read any of my other work, okay, just click on any of the videos on YouTube. and There's links to my uh, novels and uh, short stories and things like that. Um, and any reviews would be absolutely brilliant, even if it's just, uh, you know, I didn't like it or, oh, you could do this to improve. Um, that's fine. Any any critical things uh, would be absolutely appreciated, just to know that someone's reading it. Um, so that's it. Thank you. Bye.